Welcome to Excel 2010 Statistics video number 53. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 210 Chapter 5.xlsm, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're on the sheet P1. P is for Poisson. Poisson probability distribution is another discrete probability distribution, and it can be used to estimate the number of occurrences over a specified interval of time or space. This distribution is great for estimating time intervals, like over a one minute period, how many people come to your website. Uh, arrival time, space could be an example like um, a stretch on a highway. Uh, and prob Poisson probability distribution, just like the binome dist and the hyper geometric distribution and, and later distributions we have, have a great built-in function, which will make the calculating quite easy. Now, here's our formula for calculating probability for Poisson probability distribution. And you could easily uh, create that. And I actually will show you this one. I haven't, sh I didn't show you the, the binome dist one. Uh, but this one, uh, I want to show you because I want to show you how to get the number e. You absolutely don't have to do it for the class. So there's a function that does it automatically. Now, the properties of the Poisson experiment, or the Poisson probability distribution, the probability of an occurrence is the same for any two intervals of equal time length. So if you're talking about a website, there's a minute, another minute, another minute. For any one of those minutes, um, the probability is going to be the same. And also the mean. So we say like the over a one minute period, you get seven hits on your website or something. Uh, and that would be the same for each equal time length. The occurrence, another property, the occurrence or non-occurrence in an interval is independent of the occurrence or non-occurrence in any other interval. So how many people come in one interval is independent of another interval. Here's the deal, though, about the Poisson probability distribution. right? If we're talking about people coming to your website, right? there could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So theoretically, it could go up to infinity. But the big numbers are basically totally improbable. So there's no upper limit. And it starts at 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, et cetera. I didn't mean to say 4, 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But the big numbers are highly unlikely. The, also, another uh, characteristic of the Poisson probability distribution is that the mean is exactly equal to the variation. Um, we'll use not this. I, we will use the uh, dot dist. That's the new 2010 Excel functions. Poisson dot dist, and it will have an. You'll have to put in an x. That means the probability of getting like three people at your website over a one-minute period. You'll have to give it the mean, and then tell it whether it's zero for exact or one for cumulative. This part of it is exactly like we've been doing a lot with the binome dist and later with other distribution functions. 0 gives us the exact 1. Cumulative gives us from the smallest number up to whatever x you throw into the function. Now let's look at an example here. We're going to say x is the number of web vi visitors. We have an, a mean of 7 per minute. So notice we're going to start with our mean and our x, and we'll be able to calculate our um, probability. Now, our business, our your cool website, right? So x will be the number of web vis visitors arriving at a rate of 7 per minute at your cool website. Now, let's check the two assumptions. Probability is the same for any one minute interval. We'll assume that that's true. And that the any minute, the arrival of people is independent. We'll assume that that's true also. Now, let's look at a couple of calculating examples. Whoops, Alt W G. No, red, no, no red, no red. All right, so our mean, seven minutes. Um, and in our first example, we're going to calculate the probability of getting zero visitors per one minute. As you can imagine, the probability is probably extremely small. Our mean is going to be, well, we're given that. 
And so we'll do our uh, Poisson.dist, the probability that zero visitors will come in a one minute period. Poisson.dist, here's the old one we used to use, Poisson.dist. The x, that's going to be a, a zero, comma. The mean, that's our set, I put it right there, comma. And cumulative, same as before. We're figuring an exact, so we're going to put zero. So the probability is quite small. Now let's go ahead and, just for kicks, I should have done this earlier with binome disk, but I'll show you how to calculate this longhand. And any of the functions you see in the textbook can be calculated longhand. Um, we're going to take our mu. And actually, we have a division bar here. And since there's no such thing in Excel, we have to put parentheses around this. So I'm actually going to open parentheses. Mu caret raised to the x, that's our 0, and we have multiplication. Now, notice we can go in left to right. Well, I mean, that, that's not a problem here, because exponents will calculate first. But now let's multiply it, and we have an e. How do you get e? e is this magic number that shows up all sorts of places. Um, and the way you do it is you use the exponent function. Now, exponent function calculates an exponent base e. and so we can simply say, if that's true, we can give it the number of the exponent. Anything raised to 1 is itself. So exponent 1 will give us our e number. So if you highlight this and hit F9, you can see bloop, there it is. Control Z. Uh, e shows up all sorts of places. The continuous compounding function in um, finance and all sorts of other places. All right, so we have our e. Now I need to raise it to our. I'm going to suspend this for a second. I'm going to put my cursor right there in space. Bring this down here. And then I'm going to come back here and backspace. Escape, 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 escape. I totally messed that up. I'm going to leave that there. Escape got me back to the, the when I had last entered this. If I had escaped without ever entering it, it would have shown blank. So I backspace. Now there's our formula. Oh, an exponent minus mu. So I'm an exponent, caret, shift 6, and uh, minus, and then our mu. I'm going to go right here. Now, the nice, the cool thing about the negation sign in Excel is that it is a unitary operator, which means it gets calculated before any of the other uh, operation. So if there's another operation next to it, we don't have to put parentheses around this. It'll know to take negative. All right, now we close parentheses to get down to this part. And this means factorial, right? So we saw how to use the factorial function. Fact of that x. And there we go. We have our a formula here, and we should get exactly the same answer, and we do. All right, now, uh, before I go any further, I want to create a distribution um, and take a look at it, just like we did with our earlier functions. I'm going to come down here, grab the scroll bar, and uh, drag it down here. I actually already have an x and a probability of x. I'm going to click right there and highlight. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut control asterisk on the number pad to highlight that whole thing there. Now, I already have a chart made, so when we fill this out, it'll populate here. We can take a look. It's the same as we did with the binome dist, and we'll do later with norm dist and other functions. I'm going to do PO tab. And our x, comma, and our mean. That is so mean. I'm going to click right there and hit F4 comma, and then cumulative is 0, because we're creating our chart and calculating an exact probability for each one. So I'm going to double click and send this down. And so, and then check the last one. Looking good. So we're just as uh, capable of creating charts and taking a look at the distribution. And again, for Poisson distribution, uh, there's no upper end. I actually just stopped it. 30, you could keep going and keep going if you want. But at some point, it gets pretty darn small. So for charting, we get the picture here. Uh, and right here is our mean right in here, the uh, uh, 
uh, the biggest one right there, and then down here it's very improbable. It goes up, 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 and then sh tails off. So as you can imagine, if there's a f uh, you know just one or two uh, really big values out here, then the skew on this is to the right or positive. All right, um, so that's the the picture. And you know you could do the same thing here with uh, adding, but again, you wouldn't want to. This is a perfect example. I wouldn't want to add up all these. I want. I like the fact that there's a built-in function, and we can just do it simply. And again, this one's even easier than the binom disk. We just have our x and our mean. All right, let's do another one. Let me see if I can zoom in. Got to get a better handle on that zoom. We'll stop right there. All right, so our second example, two or more in one minute. I'm going to use PO, two or more. Oh, OK, so two or more. If we were to look at our picture, that means the two bar and everything above. We know that this, these distribution functions always go from the small value up to the input, right? So two or more. Well, two won't work if I put an x of two here. That won't work because I this will calculate. I want the, this to calculate everything from zero to one, and then I'm going to subtract this from one. So I have to take two minus one, comma, and then my mean, and comma. This is cumulative one, just as we saw before. Now, right now, this will give me zero and one, right? And then you can even go prove yourself over here. You can say alt equals zero and one. Right? Well, that gives us these two bars, and we want everything above, so we'll say 1 minus. That's just the way the, the distribution functions work. If you want the upper end, you've got to go 1 minus. And wow, so yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Two or more in one minute. Now, what about this next example? What's the probability of getting exactly 1 in a half a minute? Now, we were given a mean of 7 for the interval 1 minute. But we can certainly calculate the mean for a half a minute by saying, hey, half a minute, 7 divided by 2. Now, I'm going to do 7 times this 0.5 here. That's the same as divide by 2. So there's our mean. Now we can calculate the probability, not of exact, but let's do 1 or more in 30 seconds. 1 minus. We're doing the upper end. Poisson. Our x, well, we have 1 or more. So again, we're going to have to do this minus 1. That gives us 0. Oh, there's only 1 then, right? We could do this calculation a few ways, but I'm going to do it this way. Comma, and then the mean, that. Comma, now, it doesn't matter which one of these put, because there's only 1 below. But I am going to say cumulative 1. That way, if I were to change this to 4, it would still work. All right, so there it is, 0.96. Now what about 5 or more in 1 minute? Equals 1. This is, again, on the uh, all on the upper end we're doing here for this particular example. So our x, it's 5 or more, minus 1, comma, our mean, 7, comma, 1. And so our probability of getting five or more is 0.82. And we could certainly do one less. Let's see how I do uh, four or less. Um, four or less. And so we're doing on the lower end. And this one's easy. We just do the, the Poisson. Our x is 4, because anytime we put an x into these, these distribution functions, it's going to go from the low end all the way up. So if we're looking up here, it's going to go from the low end all the way to 4, if we tell it to be cum cumulative. So the x is 4. The mean will be our 7, comma 1. And the probability of getting 4 or less is 17. Now, in this example here, this is a great example. We can see how to, to use these. We're not just saying, hey, what's the probability for fun? If we're getting one hit per minute, 
and this is the probability associated with it. You know there's something wrong, right? And that's how you use probability to help you, you know, run your business or whatever it is. Um, you know, and you get these kinds of probabilities, then those are reasonable. Something like this, totally unreasonable. All right, uh, Poisson distribution. We saw a lot in Chapter 5 about discrete probability distributions. Um, and next chapter, Chapter 6, we'll talk about con a continuous random variable and some distributions associated with that type of variable. All right, we'll see you next video and chapter.